up guys? Welcome back to Say Mojo Homestead. We are going to be doing our second part to the goat care class. So we are out here. It is nighttime. We are in the milk house. That's right. This session we're going to be talking about how we milk our dairy goats and just how we ensure that that milk stays fresh until the time that we drink it. All right. So the first thing you want to do is punch the bag essentially. Um, the reason you do that is that's how the babies let the mom know that they're ready to milk and it sort of triggers that milk drop. And so while it looks like it might be aggressive, um, if you have never had baby goats and had them on the mom or seen that happen, those baby goats are not easy on those udders. And those udders are tough. You're probably not going to hurt them unless you just all out like Mike Tyson punched them or something. Um, and then if you noticed, Cass dipped the teats with iodine. It's basically just uh, this thing that you can squeeze and it puts it in the top. And I just made a mess. It's called a teat dip cup. And so you can find that on Amazon or I think Tractor Supply sells them as well. Um, like I said, we just use iodine to teat dip them. The reason you want to do that is it just sterilizes anything that might be on the teat. Next, you're going to let it sit for about a minute and then wipe them off with soapy water. Now, it doesn't have to be super soapy, uh, just soapy enough that will kind of clean them. And then you're going to strip them. So this is what Cass is doing right now. Basically, you're going to give them two squeezes that gets any of the milk that just was already in the teat out of there because it's just a precautionary, especially if you're gonna be drinking raw goat's milk. You don't want to risk any dirt or anything that might be in there. It's also been sitting there. It's just a good way to ensure that all the milk you're getting is gonna be good, clean milk. So you're gonna just throw that out. And we do give that strip milk to our dogs. They love it. Um, unless there is some major infection, it's pretty low chance that that's gonna be anything in that milk that's gonna harm us or the animals, but it's just a precautionary thing. We like to be extra safe here. And then it's milking time. So the way that you milk a goat is not the same way that you milk a cow. The way you want to do it is pinch off the top part of the teat and then squeeze the teat out. So essentially what you're doing is you're, all the milk is dropping into that teat. You're going to pinch off the top to hold it in there and then squeeze it out. If you're not pinching tight enough, it's just gonna push all that milk back up in the udder when you go to squeeze. So it takes a little bit of practice if you've never done it, but um, again, this udder and teat area is pretty tough and you're not gonna hurt them. That was one thing I was always afraid of um, when, we, when I started milking that I was gonna squeeze them too tight and do damage. There's really a low risk of doing any kind of damage to them when hand milking and so Really, it's just kind of getting the feel for it. So you're just gonna go, you can go back and forth. You can milk out one side and then the other. There's not really a right order to it, but you do want to ensure that you milk them all the way out. If not, you're gonna start to dry them off, which is something else I wanna talk about. We have one goat, Emily Rose, who is getting up into close to being a senior goat, meaning senior in age. Um, we may breed her one more time, but she's kind of getting close to that age where we don't want to breed her anymore. And because of that, her milk supply has dropped off. So we have actually already dried her off. Now, if you don't know what that term means, that's when the milk stops producing. And you can encourage that by just not milking them all the way out and cutting back on their milking. A goat, like most mammals, is only going to produce as much milk as they need to. And so when you milk them, that's what's telling their body how much milk to produce. So if you're milking them less and you're not milking them out, they're going to drop their milk supply. And so by doing that and going to once a day and then once every other day um, over a couple of weeks, then you can dry them off. You are going to want to do that towards the end after they get bred. Um, no, they will probably, depending on your breed, naturally just dry off. Nigerian dwarfs will only produce milk for about an eight month period. If you've got a really good milker, you may be able to get 10 months out of them. 
but they are naturally going to start drying off at that point. Uh, now, the mini Nubian, which is who we are milking right now, they can be in milk and stay in milk for over a year. And again, if you got a really good milker, um, we've heard of cases where <laughs> they've gone two years without having to be bred and they're still giving milk. So it really just comes down to the breed that you have and how long they are going to stay in milk. Yeah. So what Cass is doing now is just checking to make sure we did get all of that milk out of her because again, we're not trying to dry her off. So we wanna keep her full. One thing when you are drying a milk, uh, drying a goat off is you want to make sure you do stretch it out over a several week period. If you do it too quickly, then you do risk mastitis or other infections. Now, when you're done milking, you're going to do the teat dip one more time. The reason is because the orifice on the teats are open because you've just milked them. Milk's been released. And so by dipping them, it allows that iodine to get up in there a little bit. And it just helps to kind of seal it off so that there's no bacteria that can get back up in there. Uh, now, animals, white goats, are going to go back out in the field. They may go lay down. They poop on the ground. Even if you're keeping it clean, there's just always that slight risk that bacteria could get in. So you really want to make sure that you're keeping those teats and that udder as clean as possible before and after milking. And that will ensure that you are getting the healthiest possible milk out of them. All right, guys, so now we are inside and it is time to store this milk. Before we go any farther, if you guys are already a part of our YouTube channel, thank you so much. We appreciate you guys tuning in. If you're not a part of the family yet, that's what we like to call you guys, you, our YouTube family, then we would love to have you join along in our journey. So we do mechanically milk our goats we did a we just milked majesty out with the hand for this video so that's why the milk is in this big thing uh, but one thing that you want to make sure is that you strain your milk because even if you shave the udder and all of that you're still probably going to get some hairs in it baby trash i mean we do it in semi-open air so there might be a bug or something that fell in but you just want to strain it. We just use like a cheap coffee strainer, like a reusable coffee strainer. And then just for the sake of ease, you probably are going to want to put or get a funnel to use for that. Um, so something that's very important with milk is you want to get it in the refrigerator as soon as possible. Uh, it just ensures freshness and it also prolongs that freshness. And what we'll do is date the top of this, put it in the refrigerator, and that way we know how old the milk is for one, and two, just when we milked it. So that if there is any kind of funky flavor or anything like that, which we've never had an issue with, it'll let us know kind of when that started. But. So that's it. It really is pretty easy. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. We will be glad to answer anything that you may have. Now, we have found that on YouTube, there's a lot of different ways. I mean, there's kind of the generic like rule of thumbs. Like you definitely want to wipe off the udder and uh, get the milk in the refrigerator as fast as possible and stuff like that. But um, we do tend to take a few extra precautions uh, because we got our goats from a grade A goat dairy and we just follow their practices. We figured if DHEC is gonna approve them, then us doing it out here is just gonna be that much safer for us. So again, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have a great week and be blessed. <laughs>